Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and this, as you are doubtless aware, is my 2002 Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor P71, which, don't tell the others, but I think might be my favourite on the fleet at the moment. Right now, this car I bought back in September from Ohio in the US of A. It took a little while to arrive, it turned up just in time for Christmas, and in the meantime, I've been trying to get everything ready to get an MOT and then get the thing road legal. The one thing I had to do, which took a long time, well I didn't do it, this is all bureaucracy in the background and it's just a waiting game from my point of view, was getting a thing called Nova. And that means that the DVLA have been told by HMRC that the VAT has been paid on the import of this car. With me? That finally happened, and then a couple of weeks ago, it meant I was able to get the title, the American Document of Ownership, for this car in the post, and that means once I've got an MOT on it, I can post the MOT certificate and that Nova certificate and a bunch of cash and title turn back to the DVLA again, who will then send me a UK registration document. So that was happening in the background. In the meantime, I was trying to get this thing MOT ready for the UK. And there's a few things I've done which I'll quickly talk you through because there's a lot of questions on the previous videos. And finally, off camera, I had a professional electrician come around and sort out the fog light on the back of this thing. So now we are good to go. It's going to do two more jobs before it goes off the MOT. I'm going to change the oil because this has been sat since, well, September at the very least, possibly longer. I'm going to say it's a good six months doing virtually nothing. So I'm going to get that fresh oil and filter change. And then I'm going to get underneath it. And although I've looked under it from lying beside the sill, and checked it looks pretty solid. I'm gonna get underneath it properly and also I'm gonna underseal it with some spray cans just to make it look a bit prettier and protect it. It's really salty out here and I don't want its first drive on UK roads to get the thing rotten. Now the first thing to talk about are these lights which I did cover a couple of times in previous videos but I've opened more questions and answers apparently in the comments. This light pattern would not be legal if I was IVAing the car. If it was a brand new car or a car less than 10 years old and I was bringing it into the country for the first time, it would have to be treated like a new car. And because this is not UK correct, that would be an MOT fail and an IVA fail. But because this car is old enough to be under import rules, my MOT tester tells me that will be an okay pass. Now, what this is here, main and dip beam headlight just there, running light just there, running light and indicator just there. However, I've got plans for some other kind of side repeater going on either on the wing mirror itself or down here on the bumpers and much of the plastic or even but the police spec side panels this one is a civilian spec or a street appearance spec that one is a police spec on the other side have got space in the bottom for another bulb where you put a strobe normally so i could put a side repeater indicator just there if i was to replace this one with the lower mounting point in it anyway that's by the by this will get through because it's a 2002 car that's all fine the main point of contention which people seem to be very positive about is direction. Now these lenses, when you look at them, are just clear plastic covers. There's no focusing, there's no beam pattern, there's no anything at all. I'll, I'll flash up on screen a picture of the Freelander's headlight and that's completely different. It is plastic as well, but it's got all these little mouldings in there which point the beam in different directions, whether it's on main beam or dip beam, to deflect it. These have got none of that. This is what's called a flat beam. So the best you can do is just point the angle bit of the entire headlamp unit slightly off to the left and so it doesn't point into people's eyes. That's basically how you get around it. People have mentioned putting a, um, a sticker like when you go to France on here. That's an MOT fail because there's no lens deflector point that you're blanking out or improving or changing. It's just plain plastic. So just point it to the left and it's fine. When this works in practice, it just points a beam straight down the road. It's not angled off to the right or the left like a European light would be or more modern American light. So that's the front ones. Now next up we have now next up we have the indicators which uh, obviously on the American car and next up we have the indicators which when it was in standard American form just flashed the tail lights and brake lights. I've separated that circuit out so now we've got this lower section converted into an orange light. I know a lot of people did say you know you can buy earlier and later tail lights which have got the orange strip in the bottom. I was aware of that. They were $35 each from Rock Auto plus shipping. However, I wanted to keep the all red tail light look um, that the car came with from new. So that's why I fitted the green LED bulbs and there's two in there so it's lit evenly across the bottom. And that is running a little bit fast. I did buy some of these Amazon uh, resistors specifically for this purpose and they've made next to no difference. So what I will do in order to get a little bit slower is I will <laughs> get an old fashioned incandescent bulb and I'll include it in the circuit inside the boot so it'll flash inside the boot and that will just put a bit of resistance in the circuit better than these things. That was not £10 well spent. 
or 20 or whatever it was. Now the last thing that needed to be done here on the back of the car was a fog light. Now lots of people suggested it, I'd already come up with this idea because I'd seen it on other Crown Victorias, was to take out the right hand reversing light bulb and replace it with a red LED of the same kind. Now, the rules have actually changed a little bit since, well, recent actually. Um, it, previously you just had to have a switch on the dashboard which lit up and you could turn it off and on separately from everything else and your fog light was fine. Now they've changed the rules so the fog light has to come on only when you've got the headlights on not just the side lights, but the headlights specifically, and it has to go off with the headlights, and then when you turn the headlights on again, the light is not on anymore. Which means you have to have a thing called a momentary switch, and you have to have the correct kind of relay. I've been trying to do this for, well, ages. As you know, the original auto electrician never showed up, so I did all the tail lights myself, which was frankly terrifying, but I couldn't make the, uh, the fog light system work. James from Advanced In Car Solutions came around and he knocked it out of the park. It was a freezing cold afternoon. It's like one degree centigrade. So I just took one picture of him out the window and let him get on with it and didn't slow him down because it was painfully cold and it was getting dark. But he did a great job. In the end, he took a power feed from the headlight in the front of the car. And I'd already run a power line from the dashboard to the back of the car, taking the back seat out. I think you'd seen that previously in another video. And uh, yeah, then he connected it all up as I'd hoped. So the power feed for the fog light is now taken from here. The only thing that looks non-standard though is that bit of silicon because the catch had been broken at some point in the car's history. Now that won't fall out. Excellent. You can't even tell where it goes through the loom and into the bulkhead. One other bonus side effect, I've read online that you need to angle this light this direction and it comes on. It doesn't really do much, but you know, it's nice to have it working. I'd fed the wire through here to this far into the boot and up along the side of the hinge through this conduit and then James finished the work by hiding it inside the boot lid, taping it all up in one of these looms to make it look factory and then fitting it inside here and I fitted one of these high intensity LEDs into here inside the original bulb mounting and everything like that. So it's all looking factory and stock and discreet. Right, oil change time and the oil filter is here at the front of the engine. Um, quite easy to get that from underneath but not so easy from above. Okay so this is the first time I've ever had to take the wheel off in order to do an oil change because the sump plug is all the way over there and even though the wheel off it's very much at arm's length away still. Incredible and there's the oil uh, filter as well. I'm hoping that when I've undone the 16 millimeter sump plug but I am hoping that the drain pan I've got is big enough because this thing takes 5.6 litres of oil, which is quite a lot really. Um, I did want to get a Motocraft oil filter to keep it all, you know, fed forward genuine, but I've gone with Wix, decent brand, and it was available off the shelf at JR Auto Parts. They had it within about two hours instead of mail ordering a Motocraft from the other side of the Atlantic, which, you know, I'll do, I'll get a stockpile of them before too long. Checked all the book and everything, and it says 520 fully synthetic and chittle forums and everything as well, they all agree. Some people say 530, but this seems to be the one to go for. Even said on the Halfords website that that is Ford specific, but I don't think Halfords were thinking really of one of these Fords. Incidentally, while I've got this thing up in the air, just look at how clean the floor of this car is. It is absolutely amazing. There's surface rust on these panels here which I'm going to wax all in a second. These floor pans are like new virtually. I can't believe how good this car is. It's absolutely astonishing how nice it is. Big extension bar on this, so hopefully it'll just... Oh, it's not too tight at all, actually. Amazing. I was expecting a fight. But look at this car, it's just astonishing how clean this whole thing is. I'll just turn this by hand here. I really hope I can fit five and a half litres of oil in this thing. Oh man, don't make a mess of the drive. The wheel is quite black, I'm glad I'm doing this. Oh no, wind, 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 wind. Lots of wind. Whoa, there we go. It didn't make a horrific mess. Astonishing. Definitely time for a change on this. Oh, blimey, that wind! Yeah, the wind is actually quite an issue down this garden driveway. 
Please stop for a minute, it's getting very close to the top. Just. Okay, I'm going to put this back on because it's not doing much more apart from flowing in the wind. I think, here we go, the claspy thing with a UJ and a half extender should be just enough, yeah, to get that on there. Now I can undo the filter without any destruction because I'm just a tiny bit concerned that having found the filter that JLS did a bit of research and it, I knew it was shared with a Mondeo and they double checked that and found it was a two and a half litre Mondeo interestingly um, I might have the wrong one so I'd have to reuse this before I can move the car oh, we go. oh I've made up here so it's not being reused whatever happens oh, I must get some more gloves and I'm out of gloves there we go freed or oh, slightly freed Okay, mental note for the next time I do an oil change in this car, I need a much, much bigger oil pan. Okay, new filter, dribble of oil on the rubber. And on it goes, excellent, oh, it fits, that's always a massive relief. Okay, there you go, as if proof were needed people always comment about oil viscosity and that kind of thing it does actually say 520 on the oil cap but I'm going to cheat and use this pouring pal because that is so thin and it's so windy and to finish up 0.68 of this one I mean how are you supposed to measure 0.68 of a litre is that 0.6 no it's 0.34 It's about that. Well, the floor pans are absolutely amazing, but the, uh, the heavy duty chassis rails have got some surface rust on them. So it's gonna give them a quick wire brush in the worst parts, then go and hit them with some uh, underbody sealer rust proofing material in a can. I was gonna use the compressor for all of this, but um, because they didn't have any in Halfords, I'm just gonna use aerosols. It almost seems, oh there's a massive dent here in the boot where this is parked on something heavy quite hard. I think I'm going to whack this with a mallet on the inside before I do anything else. Well, that explains why the uh, footwell in the rear isn't quite as flat as it should be. Big block of wood to spread the load. Mm, how does that look? Actually it's better, believe it or not. That's a a lot less of an intrusion into the cabin. Right, where to begin? Oh, an exhaust again, damn it. Well, there you go. I've done the best job that I can uh, with the car just on a single jack. I did make a slight boo-boo in that I uh, realized after I'd started painting the frame rails, I couldn't jack up the other four or three wheels and remove them. So I've only gone around the wheels as best I can with the, uh, the spray can, but I do need, when it's dried, to get back in there and paint properly behind the wheels. But I did manage to get up onto the rear of the frame rails. The floor pans and the boot bottom or boot base were more or less perfect. It was just these lower edges of the uh, frame rails where they're taken the impact of the grit and the salt over the years. This car must have been steam cleaned fairly regularly to stay in this kind of condition. It's absolutely amazing. But if we look just behind the axle and uh, under the fuel tank, we've got this extra protection and this yellow thing, which is the extra underbody protection package. And somewhere up there, there's the fire safety shield explodey safety system as well, which I didn't want to get paint on. Now I didn't film myself doing this because it is a disgusting, messy process. It's quite satisfying watching it go on, but you really do need glasses, absolutely a mask, absolutely goggles, otherwise you get yourself absolutely smothered and definitely wear old clothes. 
and it's such a windy day yesterday that it was going everywhere so I couldn't put a camera under here to follow it because the wind, it was a massive storm which destroyed some buildings up north um, it was taking the stuff everywhere. Then he, obviously I didn't do the prop shaft which is of course a torque tube being a P71 police interceptor not just a regular prop shaft. Didn't do the exhaust because that would stink but everything else is now very solid. Considering this is an Ohio Rust Belt car I am astonished at the condition of this floor pan. I was really quite worried what I bought after I realised where I bought it from but this is quite the relief. And with fresh oil in that seems to not be exploding and the little light's still working too. Oh, indicators. Still fiddling with those resistors. I don't know. It's a bit quick, but I think it's just within the limit. Anyway, all good. Well, the car is now basically as rust proof as it's going to get. Everything is done as much as I can do. All I can do now is put some more V power in it to try and help with the emissions and then take it for a good, fast Italian tune up drive with lots of heavy braking and handbrake stamping and just to try and free off everything and make sure it's all working as good as possible on the day of the MOT. So fingers crossed, wish me luck. If you've got any religions you particularly favour then pray to that one and if you're into voodoo or something then do something with a chicken, I don't know. I'll need all the help I can get. Hopefully we can get this thing through its test and be on the road and actually driving this thing at last. Fingers all of the crossed. Thank you for watching. As always, please do hit like and subscribe so you can follow these ridiculous stories. I'll see you again next time, maybe even when this MOT pass or fail. Mm -hmm.